the world, this is Maya Sundermeyer, and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. The main purpose of my blogs right now is to talk about what it is like for me to live on the autism spectrum day in and day out. Um, uh, my main purpose right now is to educate the world about what it is like for me to live with autism, to um, educating others that are on the autism spectrum and um, helping them tackle everyday problems like how to deal with a uh, neurotypical that is being a quote-unquote, and I catchphrase, the, catchphrase this, pain in the butt. Um, I also like to educate neurotypicals as to how they could uh, view us and they could uh, not, not necessarily change their minds, but... Um, maybe have a, a better understanding of where we're coming from and uh, get away from the the telescope of life and the telescope of uh, uh, of stereotyping where they look at um, they look at what's going on inside of the telescope instead of really stepping back to look at the bigger picture. Um, I eventually would like to turn my blogs into a mini Good Morning America series for the um, the geek world. I would like to talk to uh, people that uh, attend Comic-Con. I would like to talk to um, any scientists at uh, the Georgia's, uh, Georgia's Institute of Technology and Georgia State University and uh, to uh, the latest uh, b trends at Comic-Con and Dragon Con and uh, to... Um, Possibly uh, one day talking to celebrities like David Tennant and Patrick Stewart and Leonard Nimoy and um, Sean Astin, you name it. Um, I would also would like to one day talk about the latest findings. But right now, I think I would like to uh, stick with one topic, and that's um, educating the world about autism from my own eyes. Um, and I had most recently talked about what it is like for me to live on the autism spectrum and um, and to make friends. And I basically talked, it basically talked about a little timeline. And um, one thing you should know about people on the spectrum is that we have lots of trouble making friends, and as well as keeping them. Why? Well, number one, we have trouble communicating. Number two. Um, we don't always have the same interests that a neurotypical will carry. Three, um, we can uh, have a one-track mind, or we can also give off negative vibes that make us look cold and unfriendly. Um, and um, I know it's been difficult for me to make friends, and it was it was even more difficult for me when I was in uh, when I was a teenager, and it especially became more and more relevant, or more and more. Um, visible, especially by the time I was 14, when my childhood friend, um, who I'd known for about six years, um, took an interest in, um, in boys. When she got her first boyfriend, she was interested in things like putting on makeup, and she was interested in putting on perfume, and calling up, calling up her boyfriend and talking about how cute he was, and she was interested in wearing bras and deodorant and um, making sh just making sure she uh, blended in with the rest of the world by um, trying to go from a child into a teenager. So that, that in itself for her was very exciting. And of course for me, it was like, um, I don't know, having, for me, um, here, I, here she was from going... Here she was going from being interested in me to being interested in a boy and um, looking at me like I was a freak because I, uh, my interests uh, included everything from cartoons. Um, and I was a very, very big Disney fan. I talked about The Little Mermaid and Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King. And, just, and I talked about all the different details and she didn't quite understand that. And... Uh, I remember uh, that summer when she met her first boyfriend, I would call her up and uh, and try to talk to her, but suddenly she was uh, acting passive aggressive and never and didn't have time to talk to me anymore. Suddenly she couldn't talk to me because uh, she was waiting for her boyfriend to call. And see to me, um, I had a mel 
you know, it caused me to get angry with her and have several meltdowns and possibly even have a mild panic attack. I mean, not not the severe kind, but I just remember I didn't feel very good about it. And then um, things um, things got worse when I um, entered when I went back to junior high that year. As I was in ninth grade, um, some of the other kids in my special education class. Um, we're not on the autism spectrum, but they too themselves were interested in being teenagers and they were interested in learning and growing how to mature and learning the difference between what was inappropriate and was not what was not inappropriate. And um, again, they weren't interested in talking about things like Disney movies. They were interested in talking about hockey games and going sneaking out of their you know and allowing their and talking their parents into allowing them to go to R-rated movies like Tobey Maguire. Or not Tobey Maguire, but Jerry Maguire. <laughs> and again, here I was um, still trying, uh, still playing with my sister and acting like I was um, eight and nine years old. And um, so when you live on the autism spectrum, one thing you should realize is, is that emotionally, you're not always going to act like other kids other kids your own age unless you have the proper intervention and you have the proper nourishment and mentors um, but I do remember I do remember I, I was heartbroken I felt I felt like everything was the end of the world because nobody liked what I liked anymore in fact um, it made me feel like I had to um, pressure myself just to fit in so until next time, I'm Maya Sundermeyer, and I'm signing off now. Bye.